What's the best boat for you? Whether you're fishing the flats for bonefish or trout, heading offshore trolling for dolphin, or bottom fishing for grouper, Florida Sportsman's Best Boat will provide the information you need to decide which boat is the best boat for you. Florida Sportsman's boating editor and trusted selected experts have traveled to some of Florida's hottest fishing locations to review the latest in outboard technology, as well as run 36 boats in 12 different classes, including flats boats, bay boats, and center consoles. Today on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat, we're going to Ocean Reef Club, the getaway to the Keys, where it's a short hop offshore to some of the best dolphin fishing in the state. Our host, Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine, will be joined by Captain Glenn Clyatt, a Florida native who has worldwide fishing and tournament experience that guides out of the resort. Dave and Glenn will take the class of 35-foot center consoles and put them through their paces. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to the spectacular Florida Keys in this episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm your host, Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman, and today we're at the beautiful Ocean Reef Club in Key Largo, and we're going to show you a class of 35-foot center consoles to see if one of them is the best boat for you. Large center console fishing boats are extremely versatile, allowing you to target a variety of offshore fish. Trolling Ballyhoo for Dolphin, a high speed for Wahoo, a boat this size can only be classified as a true fishing machine. If battling bottom species like grouper and snapper is more your style, you'll find the extra room and features in these boats to be perfect for a day at work on the reef. But it's not just about reaching the Gulf Stream. A 35-foot center console can easily cross it, which will open up a whole new experience of the islands. Many of these spacious center consoles are designed with the entire family in mind and manufacturers have included features to allow you to spend a full day or even night on the water. The three specific boats we tested today were the Everglades 355cc, the Blue Water 355e, and the Regulator 34. The Everglades 355cc is a serious fishing machine that hasn't forgotten the family with plush seating in the bow. The overall length of 35 feet 4 inches and a 10 foot 8 inch beam contains 200 gallons of fish boxes and 80 gallons of live wells. The center console houses a china bowl head and the 35 gallon freshwater tank supplies a built-in sink and shower. Maximum allowed horsepower is 1,050 and the fuel capacity is over 400 gallons below the massive 158 square foot cockpit. If a custom designed tournament rig is what you're looking for, the Blue Water 355E can be built to your specifications. Loads of index storage, insulated fish boxes, and multiple live wells are just some of the custom features. The bow can be configured either as cushion seating or open depending on your fishing and family needs. 35 feet 9 inches long and 10 feet wide, the 390 gallon fuel tank is more than enough for the 900 maximum horsepower rating. Dealing Factory Direct, the manufacturer offers a long list of options so each boat can be truly one of a kind. Using an Armstrong bracket to mount a maximum 700 horsepower gives the Regulator 34 a huge cockpit. At a length of 33 feet 10 inches and 10 foot 11 inches wide, not having to give up any room for the engine mounts gives this boat a much larger feel. A large bait well and sink prep station sit after the helm and a successful angler will find a tournament-sized fish box built into the transom. At the end of the day, the ride home will spoil you and your guests with built-in bow seating, which also doubles as storage for all of your gear. The freshwater tank can hold 31 gallons, and the fuel tank has a 380-gallon capacity. Whether fishing, diving, cruising, or entertaining, a boat in this class will spoil you. A 35-foot center console may just be the best boat for you. Let's check in with Dave and Glenn as they review our featured 35-foot center consoles. Well, this goes into what the whole premise of the show is, best boat, picking out what the best boat is for you. 
So my best boat and your best boat may be two different things. So that's very important. Somebody needs to do some research, maybe get on some of the forums, like in the Florida Sportsman Forum, ask some questions, see what boats are out there, and then kind of fit it to their lifestyle. I think it's very important. I agree. And we've been able to show quality equipment. Just a little, every boat has a little bit different, you know, features than the others. And they're all, what, what I've seen, have been high quality builds. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Glenn as they help you decide what's the best boat for you. All right, Glenn, on any 35 foot center console that's used as a serious fishing machine, I think an open bow is very important. I mean, you worked as a charter boat captain for years. Give me your opinion on the accessibility up here. I agree. Nice high gunnels. You can get right up here with your hips. Have a grab rail right, right next to you. You can fight a fish. The boat's meant to go forward, not backwards. You're not going to fall off the side of the boat. You can fish. You can get up here. On most people, that's at least uh, waist high. You can fish up front. They can fish in the back. It's uh, very logical. Nice layout. Well, speaking of fish boxes, let's look at some of these here that are built into the floor. Wow. Actually, on this boat, there's three. And I guess having an abundance of fish boxes is not bad because they can double as other things for storage. Like on this one, there's uh, even rod storage built in. Sad thing I'm seeing though, there's no fish in these boxes. It's just a bunch of gear. We need to change that. We need to go fishing then. All right, Glenn, too, and while we're on the subject of storage, under the front seat of this console, insulated ice chest. Oh, beautiful. On a day like today, it's hot. You're gonna be up here fishing. It's nice to have your drinks right here. I think a bow seating configuration like this is, is really important. Sure, the girls can get out, they can catch some sun, it's easy for the kids, and there's still plenty of room to go around and fish. And you can actually get up to the bow of the boat to anchor to catch the, the cleats, just go up on your knees, and then you can stand up. This boat has a built-in windlass. That way you can deploy the anchor from the console, and you don't have that big ugly windlass sitting up here on the bow, but you still have the ability to put the anchor out and pull it back by a push of a button. Sure, clean it off right there. Everything's out of sight. There's nothing to like about that. Right, another thing about all this bow seating, it all doubles as storage and fish boxes. These are all insulated fish boxes and they're nice and long, so if you get a big dolphin or a big kingfish, easily he'll fit in there. Sure. On a boat this size, you're gonna have a lot of tackle. It just stands to reason. And you have to have a place to put your rods. So undergoing a rod storage and how you secure those rods it's really important. You can see here, you got room for six rods on this side, there's six rods on that side, but what's that? what I like, you can shut this and you can actually lock it. Sure. So that way, if you leave the boat unattended and you go into the hotel room for the night. The sight out of mind. Exactly. Now that we know where all our tackle is, and you, now you gotta catch some fish. And then once you catch them, you gotta find a place to put them. Let's see what we got here. Space there. That's huge. Also, too, if we're going to cross to the islands, which a boat in this class could easily do, this is a great place to store additional tackle and stuff you want to take over there with you, and that way it's dry and it's not rolling around on the deck. Let's check in with Captain Glenn Clyatt as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Okay. I look in my secret book and I've got the numbers to the wreck that I want to go to. I punch them in my machine, hit go to. As the boat gets there, I start looking for the wreck on my bottom machine. Locate the wreck first, drift a little bit up current of it. If the current's going to the north that day, obviously we go south of the wreck a little bit. We determine which way the boat's going to drift and depending on the current that we have, it'll tell me that I'm going 0.6 miles per hour at a heading of 10 degrees northeast. 
the faster we're going, the further up current we need to be to start our drift for the wrecks. If the wrecks over here, start back up here, get our lines down so we can drift over to the wrecks. Free spool, drop down to the bottom. If you're fishing in 200 feet of water and there's a wreck that's 60 feet high, that's the amount of relief that comes off the bottom. If the boat's traveling like this and the wreck comes up 60 feet, you want at least 60 feet off the bottom naturally so your line doesn't hang tangle up into the wreck. You can start in front of the wreck, drop your rig, fish close to the bottom. As you start seeing the wreck coming up on your machine, wind your line up. The distance that you have of relief off the wreck, continue over the top of the wreck. As soon as you get off the back of the wreck, drop it back down. That's where most of your grouper bites are gonna come from, at least in the South Atlantic. Up next, Dave and Glenn will take you through our featured 35-foot center consoles. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Rodan, precision-guided trolling motors. Get ultra-precise anchoring with the press of a button. Or hold your ground while flipping critter baits on weed lines for big Florida bass. Or take your trolling motor anchor to the flats to target redfish and trout. Rodan HD GPS anchor and trolling motor is silent, clean, and it's your game changer for freshwater and saltwater. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's check in with Dave East as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Yeah, I love a boat with the second station. It gives you the feel of a much larger boat without the expense or the hassle of having a big inboard diesel. Birds of a prey looking for food use height to gain an advantage. Well, an angler fishing offshore can do the same thing. The higher you get in the air, the further you can see to the horizon and the deeper you can see down into the water column. So it just stands to reason that a fisherman from up here can see a lot more than the guy down below. To further enhance a boat's fishability is to have controls in a tower, more commonly known as a second station. Floating debris like an old pallet can be an absolute gold mine. But many times, spotting a piece of floatsome or a weed line while you're standing close to the surface of the water can be very hard. And you may run right past it and not even know it's there. Driving a boat from the elevated height of a tower not only allows you to see floating objects better, but gives you control to position the boat and present the best offering to waiting game fish. When you drive your boat from a tower, it puts you at a better angle to see down into the water, and your sight is less affected by glare. This will enable you to see underwater objects in a defined edge of a channel. I can see down in the water column easily. If I have to back into a tight slip, I've got 360 degrees that I can see around this boat. All right, Glenn, a lot of 35-foot center consoles have towers, and a lot of them fold, but there's one that's specific to the Everglades I want to show you. This is a really cool feature. All right, Glenn, this used to be a six-man operation, but Everglades came up with a pretty innovative feature that's going to allow me to fold this tower down by myself. Thirty seconds and we're done. That's it. I'm, now I'm ready to trailer. So I get to the ramp. I'm ready to put the tower back into position. Oh, there's no way I could be doing this without the hydraulic assist. It'd be impossible. You tighten up these two turnbuckles. And we're done. The whole thing's ready to fish. Having a tower with a second station on a large center console gives you the feel of a much bigger boat without all the hassles of owning a big offshore battle wagon. Let's get back to Dave and Glenn as they review our featured 35-foot center consoles. One thing I like about a big center console is the fact that they have big center consoles. And this boat is no exception. Look at the amount of room you've got down there. There's a bunk that's a full six foot three inches long, and it's air conditioned. If you had to get out of the way of a, a squall coming through, you had kids on board that wanted a place to go down, use the restroom, uh, get out of the sun for a while, this would be very important. This is a massive console, but I can still see over the top of it easily. Even sitting down, if we were making a long run somewhere, I'm not worried about running over a buoy or a channel marker. You know, I can see very easily. Notice here we have a fold-down step that you can 
sit down, you can either sit down here and put your feet here, or you can sit on the seats. You can sit like this, and you can there pull down footrest. Oh, this would be nice, yeah. When you're looking at any boat, and especially a boat, uh, you know, in 35 foot center console range, you really got to look at the design of the console because, like I said earlier, this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. And uh, it's just very important. It's, uh, it's something that you really just can't uh, overlook. On this boat, you go down inside the console, a lot of room, a lot of storage. The magnetic catch that allows you to keep it open to store things in there. So when you close it, nice solid fit with a gasket around here, remains watertight. Well, here's one innovation that's uh, specific to the Everglades, the windshield. You can operate it up and down. You can carry on a conversation while you're running. Nice cool breeze in here, and if it gets a little choppy, get all the way up. It's so very unique. You just have to be comfortable, whether it's staying dry or whether it's having a seat that's a comfortable position to sit in. And I'm not really, really tall, but I can still see over this console with ease, even if the boat goes up on plane. Well, let's take a look at the inside of the console. Once you get down in there, the access to the electronics on the back side of the uh, panels and stuff like that. It's, it's great. If you have a problem, you can get to everything right there in front of you. So you can see you have deep access all the way to the bottom, to a bulkhead, you have battery switches, everything that you need is right there at your fingertips. All right, Glenn, as a charter boat captain, I don't have to tell you the importance of console layout and being able to access everything on your helm. Face it, you're gonna spend 90% of your time back here driving the boat. And a place to put your feet, which is important when you start running offshore. Back we have our flush mounted electronics right here, our compass center line with the helm, we have a, a tilt steering wheel, or depending on whoever's driving the boat, their height, and uh, all your, your gauges and everything are right in front of the captain, so it's very user friendly. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by the best-in-class Evinrude e 150 horsepower outboard engine. Proven power, proven reliability. Evinrude e has been outperforming four-stroke engines for years. But what about the latest 150 four-strokes that claim to deliver two-stroke-like torque? See the proof for yourself. Get your free DVD now and watch how the two-stroke Evinrude e 150 outpulls and out-accelerates the four-stroke competition. See how it wins when it comes to maintenance, ease of winterization, and more. Evinrude e is the true champion. Go to Evinrude150challenge.com and get your free DVD now. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Glenn as they review our feature 35-foot center consoles. And most 35-foot center consoles, they're gonna be used for hardcore fishing. Having everything right here easily accessible, I think is important. Live wells back here, rigging station. I'm gonna be back here getting all the rods prepared so that when we get on scene, we're ready to go. We don't have to stop and rig baits. Here again, everything's centrally located for all your rigging, all your baits, your lures. This is one nice, tidy little area. When you do go catch a lot of fish, here's our index fish box that also can be used for storage when you're not fishing. See access to all our live well or pump systems. Another super clean build, very easy to maintain. Five years from now, it should look just as clean. And a feature that would be real important for me because we dive and we snorkel, is easy access to the transom. Having a transom door that opens this easily, being able to step back here, for me this would be a real important feature. Now from a fishing standpoint, you could use this too, couldn't you? Absolutely. Depending on how you're going to use the boat, it's the different features that separate one boat from the other. That's correct. Let's talk a little bit about the importance of having a rigging station. Okay, we'll look at it right here. Get in here, stand right behind the console. You have a grab rail. If you're running, you can get right here. You've got a, a little lift that keeps your stuff from jumping around. You can be rigging while you're on the way to the fishing grounds. We have tackle storage also below and on both sides of the console. As we make our way aft from the helm, let's talk about some of the features that this boat has in the stern. We've got a aft deck, I mean an in-deck live well right here, which is huge. Storage for two five-gallon buckets. 
you get to your pumps. Easy access, nice and clean. Aft here, and then just forward of these, you fill up these fish boxes. You have them over there fishing. Right here we've got a, uh, a prep station and a small sink. Another big live well here. Transom gate right here that's easy access to dive. And there is a pull-out dive ladder that's right below our uh, integrated transom. Pull it right out, slides down, climb right out of the boat. Having a rigging station right here where the live well is, I think this is an important feature that people should look for. All right, wow, what all is in there? Eight rigging station here, have fresh and raw water. Uh, handles when you're running, uh, this looks like it's very well built. And we have a fighting chair, fold out with the gimbal. This particular boat, not only are these fish boxes in the back, but these are cold plates. There's no ice in here, and that's really cold to the touch. So you could keep your food in here for a long trip to the islands, or you can put your fish in there if you don't feel like putting them down inside the, bow, the uh, fish box. Okay, let's take a look at the aft fish box. Wow. After that, we have a lazarette area. Where you get to your sea chest for your bait wells, batteries, nice working space right here. Well, that's important. I mean, how many years have you fished professionally? And you know what it's like to change a pump. And they're never going to break dockside. It's always going to be offshore. So having easy access to systems, oh, that's paramount. Wow, we have had a great time here at Ocean Reef Club. Uh, it's so beautiful, we really don't want to leave. Molly, thank you so oh, much for welcome. your hospitality. This facility is so nice. Tell us a little bit more about Ocean Reef. Ocean Reef Club is 2,500 acres. We're located at the northern tip of Key Largo. Many people don't know we're here because we keep it a, a well-kept secret. We're a, we're a private gated community. We have a large area called Buccaneer Island and that has two pools, it has a lagoon, it's a wonderful place for families and for adults who have a beach bar, beach grill. We try to make it uh, accessible to families to come and experience it and be a part of it. Well, unfortunately, we have to go, Molly. Thank you again so much, and we'll see you next time on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Large center console fishing boats are extremely versatile, allowing you to target a variety of offshore fish. Controlling ballyhoo for dolphin, high speed for Wahoo, a boat this size can only be classified as a true fishing machine. If battling bottom species like grouper and snapper is more your style, you'll find the extra room and features in these boats to be perfect for a day at work on the reef. If you're ready to expand your offshore fishing range to the cobalt waters of the Gulf Stream in search of that trophy dolphin, or maybe venture further over to the islands, a 35-foot center console may just be the best boat for you. If you're looking for a boat that can fish inshore and a little bit of light offshore, be sure to tune in next week as we look at the upper end of the bay boat market in the 26-foot class. Camera boat provided by Carolina Skiff. For more information on the Best Boat series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at Newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com.